Right, so here we have the new Firefly 8S. This is the first native 4K camera from Firefly. Let's get it out of the case, get it on charge, put in a micro card, and see how it performs. Right, well I've charged the camera now. It did take quite a long while. So what else do you get in this really good package of accessories? The waterproof case looks well made, and they say waterproof up to 20 meters. Only comes with one back, doesn't have a ventilated back, but I used it on my on a motorbike ride, you'll see in my clip, and I didn't have any problems with the case steaming up. You've got a good range of mounts and standoffs, long ones, short ones, twisted ones, and a J-mount. And if you're not familiar with these kind of mounts, the idea is that they slide into these stick-on mounts that go onto skateboards or helmets or motorcycle helmets or whatever. And as far as that goes, you've also got some straps here so that you can fix it onto a cycle helmet by putting the strap through the loop. You've also got one of these handlebar mounts. Also comes with what's called a backpack clip and a skeleton case. Now the skeleton case is useful for when you don't need it to be in a waterproof case because of course you'll get sound and better ventilation. Got tripod mounts on it but also the backpack clip slides in to the back of this mount and you can clip it onto a rucksack harness if you're walking or any other strap if you're doing a dry sport. Useful bit of kit. When I'm paragliding I clip it onto the chin guard of my full face helmet and it means I can operate it when I'm flying. You've also got a couple of these tripod type mounts, male and female, that you can screw directly onto a tripod if you're using the waterproof case, like so. Got a USB charging lead, cable ties, a lens cleaning cloth. You've got a pretty good manual that's in English and Chinese. It looks very thorough. You've got a couple of little stickers, a card with the QR codes for the app, which I'll come to later. Well, one thing that I've not seen before packaged with accessories is a lens hood, which is supposed to stop lens flare. Lens hood only goes on one way. There are three tabs there, and one is wider than the other two. So it's a question of locating the wide one in the wide slot. Simple as that. That's one thing I've not seen before. Another little gadget that's in with the accessories, something that I've not seen before, is this neck loop so that you can hang the camera around your neck when you're walking or out and about. And if you want to take it off for any other purpose, you can just press this button and the camera detaches so you can do what you want with it. Put it on a tripod, put it on a wall, use the timer, take some selfies. Um, pretty useful bit of kit really. And of course you clip it back on just by pushing the button like so. You can also buy an optional external mic to use with the Firefly 8S. And out of curiosity I tried it with the optional mic that's available for the Git 2 and it worked fine actually. So if you wanted to do some motorcycle vlogging and can find a way to feed this into the waterproof case by making a hole and putting a grommet, this, is, this could be a, a good answer. And also available is an optional Bluetooth remote. Now this is actually the remote for the YI cameras and you can buy these as cheaply as five pounds on Amazon, although I couldn't actually manage to pair it when I tried to pair this. It might be a slightly different version of Bluetooth. Well, as usual, the camera doesn't come with a card. As it's a native 4K camera, I've treated myself to a good quality card, class 10, but with a little three there, which means it's got the speed that will deal with 4K. And somewhat unusually, as I've never seen it before anyway, the card in the 8S goes in on the screen side here and goes in logo side towards the end of the camera just like this now, Hawkeye are an independent company that develop and produce their own cameras and they were primarily first in the FPV first person view market and I reviewed the Q6 which was a Great little FPV camera, 1080, 60 frames a second, nice and small and light. And then there was the 5S and the 6S, both again, I think, fair to say, primarily intended for the FPV market. And then they produced the 7S, which was the first that had a screen on the back, I'd say probably to get into the 
genuine action cam market. This was a good little camera but not native 4K. Reviews of all of those cameras are on my channel. And now we have the latest in the range which is a native 4K camera. Very high spec, very high spec chips. The Umbrella A12 and the Sony IMX 117 which is the same as used in the GoPro Hero 4, the SJ Cam, SJ7 Star and the IT5 which are all native 4K and very good cameras. So let's take a closer look. Case has a nice feel about it. It kind of feels rubberized which makes it very secure to hold. You've got tripod mount in the bottom, quarter inch tripod mount. You've got the battery cover here and I must say I found it quite difficult to open the first time. It actually slides out that way. You need to get your nail behind the cover and then it flips up like so to take the battery out. On the subject of the battery, the 8S has a slightly higher capacity battery than some previous models and it's also 3.85 volts as opposed to 3.7. I was a bit concerned that it might be a very special battery and hard to find but in fact I tried it with a battery from the Econ which also fits Git 2 so it's actually quite a common size even though this is 3.7 volts and 1050 milliamps as opposed to 1200 milliamps. Uh, it's good to know anyway it's quite a common battery. They suggest you get 1 hour 33 on a battery. On this end you've got USB for charging and for retrieving your files and you've got HDMI out and as I mentioned you've got this little loop here for tying a securing strap on. On the top here you've got a few ventilation holes as you have there, shutter release which also is used in conjunction with the power mode button, the scrolling buttons on the side and play button there to go through the menu and get into playback and so on. On the back you've got a very nice screen um, and it was very visible and easy to use even in pretty strong sunlight. Now on the front you've got mode stroke power, you've got a little logo there Firefly 8S which incidentally shows different colours which show you whether you're in video mode or photo mode which I found very useful too. You've also got the lens. Now this is probably the first camera that I've tested that comes with an option of two different lenses. This is the 170 degrees f2.8 wide angle lens. It's actually an 11 element or as they call it 11 glasses lens. You can also get it with a, a 90, 90 degree lens. So the other odd thing about this, I said they're an innovative company, they call this here a selfie mirror. I'm um, not sure how useful that would be. So that covers the basics of the camera. So let's look at the operation of this. Mode stroke power button on the front. Give it a two or three second press. As I mentioned, you can see that's showing a blue colour at the moment. Blue colour is video mode. And on the back screen here you can see that I'm in video mode going out of focus there, that I'm in 1080 which is 1920 by 1080, I'm in 16 by 9, 60 frames a second, and I'm in the wide view. One odd thing that I found in my tests here, in the menu there is a change of FOV, field of view setting, but for some reason it's blanked out and I couldn't actually change it. Um, maybe again that might be a firmware issue. I've got audio on, batteries full, I've got gyro stabilisation on. Another thing to point out, gyro stabilisation only works in 1080-60 and 1080-30. And later on in my clips you'll see a bit of a comparison test where I've got gyro on and gyro off. You've got date time, time's wrong there, oh and that's auto screensaver is set to one minute so it's just died. Press shutter and obviously it will wake up again. And on the 32 gig class 10 U3 card I've got in, I've got two hours. 8 minutes recording time at 1080-60. So, to shoot video, obviously press the shutter release. You've got a countdown there, duration of the video. Not sure if you can see it, but you've got a little blue light flashing there. Shutter is flashing blue. Mode stroke power is flashing blue. I must say in daylight it wasn't easy to see these when it was in the case. 
but that's a minor criticism really. Press the shutter again and it will stop. Once it's gone into screensaver mode you've got to press it once to wake it up and then again to stop it recording. So to change to photo mode is one press of the mode button and can you see that's gone to green and of course it's showing camera icon there 12 megapixel settings super fine and it just tells me the capacity there so press and I've taken a still no noise from it no shutter noise and so to get back into video mode it's another short press of mode stroke power that's straightforward enough now to get into settings see the scrolling buttons here if I'm in video mode and I press the forward scrolling button you can see I'm into a settings menu so press the shutter release and I'm into video resolutions press it again and I've got my selection of video resolutions now with a camera of this standard you've got a very good range of video resolutions going from 720 at 30 frames a second super view to 4k 30 frames a second 16 by 9 4k 25 frames a second 2160 and so on 2.7k and as I mentioned this is actually a native 4k camera in other words real 4k as opposed to the 4k that most of these budget camera manufacturers claim which is actually interpolated so if I want to say select 2.7k at 30 I scroll down to that press shutter and then press mode power and I'm back into my video and that says 2704 by 1520 so to come back to that come back to my resi I'll take it back to take it back to my normal 1080 at 60 frames a second which is my usual preferred setting for action cameras but note you've also got 1080 at 120 which again you only get on cameras with high spec chips so I select that back into that so you can also scroll through video quality super fine and so on and so on auto low light which actually changes the frame rate and makes it brighter if you're recording in a dark environment for my dark pub test my low light test I just left it in standard default settings I'm not going to go through every item here individually and carefully because there's just too much to do you've got gyro sensor or sometimes called electronic image stabilization as I say that only works in 1080 60 and 1080 30 motion detect dual files dual files creates two video files one at the resolution that you're recording at and one small one if you just want to scroll through and preview things video stamp which you can turn on or off time lapse it will do loop 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 recording if you want to use it as a car cam microphone volume as i mentioned this camera does actually have an option of an external mic sharpness auto white balance exposure value iso which is film speed metering i always prefer to use multi that takes a, a view of the whole image for its exposure and um, back to video resolutions now if you do the same thing while you're in camera mode you've got yet another menu here which gives you settings in the photo department photo size so you've got some different formats photo quality super fine fine so on long exposure for people that like doing night exposures stars and moons and so on that goes down to 60 seconds photo stamp that's probably date time on or off self timer photo burst you can have up to 10 quick photos in one click time lapse 
that's time-lapse photo as opposed to time-lapse video. In other words, it will take a photograph every so many seconds and metering and so on and so on. Now you'll notice here we've got another setting symbol. And in fact, if you use the little play button here, that takes you into a different menu. So again, quick capture on or off, delay on or off, TV mode, PAL or NTC, light frequency, 50 hertz or whatever, brightness, on-screen display, auto shutdown, screen off, status, beep, time setup, date format, language, Bluetooth pairing for the remote if you buy one, Wi-Fi, format, default setting, and the firmware version. So that covers that. Press power, you're back into your normal shooting mode. Now the playback button also lets you play back. You can scroll through using the scrolling buttons, your videos. Although as far as I can tell, there's no audio with the playback. Again, that might be a firmware issue. So press play again and I'm back into video mode. I think that pretty much covers everything about the operation of the camera. Very straightforward. Might be a couple of bugs there, which no doubt they're sorted out. There have been a couple of firmware changes since I recorded my video. And of course the turn off, it's just a two or three second press of the power button. You get a series of beeps and it shuts down. So let's move on to the Wi-Fi app. Right, the Wi-Fi app. As mentioned, you've got a card here with the QR codes for the iOS or the Android Wi-Fi app. I use a free QR code scanner. Just a question of scanning and installing Hawkeye, Firefly.com, Firefly Cam app and then installing and it looks like a pretty slow download so watch this space I'll come back in a minute I'll skip this bit back in a minute Hawkeye I won't press connect yet right it says in the manual to turn on the Wi-Fi I haven't tried this yet let's try it obviously power up and it says press and hold the down scrolling button which I assume means this one. And it does. Wi-Fi symbols up. So let's press connect. And bear in mind this is real time here. Oh, connection failed. Ah, we know why. Because go into settings. Wi-Fi. Firefly. There it is. Password, show password, password for first time installation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Connect. Now the Motorola phone will ask me if I really want to connect because there's no internet. There you go. Do I want to connect? Yes. So let's go back to Firefly Cam. Connection failed. Next step, turn on the camera, next step. Open the phone connection, connect. Should work this time. And what do you know? It has, because as you can see on my phone here, you can now see me looking at the phone and the camera. Now what can you do with the app? I don't know, let's have a look. You can obviously change settings gyro, exposure value, metering, sharpness obviously tells me that I'm in 1080, 60, 16 by 9 recording time, change to time lapse, burst photo you can stop start video got a countdown there and this means that you could put the camera somewhere and start it remotely probably 10 meters away from your phone if you were recording wildlife or something or if you wanted to do a selfie, I suppose, with a photo. Sharpness, metering, gyro, exposure value. Incidentally, I think it records 720 at 
240 frames a second which is excellent for slow motion video Not sure. slow motion time lapse oh and that obviously changes it to still mode is taking pictures so looks easy to use oh change to landscape so useful little app and probably very easy to change settings just using the app I'll come back to not landscape mode so for example long exposure time-lapse video back to video you've also got a menu there for setting nice and easy to use this way display on and off in fact pretty much the whole menu that you've got on the phone I'd say so useful app not sure if you can download it's probably in there somewhere let's go back okay so I figured how to um, get into the download bit this one here changes the view from portrait to landscape like so this one here does the stop start or takes a still or burst photos or whatever you want and this one here is the one that lets you access the videos on the camera and if you press select select all you can then download to your phone or tablet and then you can obviously view them on your phone or tablet and you must be in there somewhere so that's quite straightforward you can use this for FPV first person view quadcopter type flying put it on video let's see what the lag is quite a long lag as you can see so I think if you were using it for FPV it might make control a bit difficult but all the same useful app oh and of course I should say to come out of the Wi-Fi app turn the camera off and just come out of it like so hope that's helpful anyway that was easy to install and works fine apart from a bit of a lag there so it's time to get on to some test clips test clips were recorded at 1080 60 with the gyro on there is a test comparison showing the difference between gyro on and gyro off there are also a couple of 4k clips in the long video which are re rendered at 1080 60 because I can't mix resolutions in one video but the two short 4k clips I will also upload as a separate little YouTube and Vimeo video in 4k resolution so you can actually see what the 4k quality is like so I hope that's helpful let's get on with some test clips Right, this is the first of a couple of test shots shot at 4k 30 frames a second which will be rendered at 1080 60 in the big review but I shall render them separately at 4k in another clip with a link on this okay some good detail here on this brickwork and as you swing round you've got some distance here down to the harbour and there's some lovely detail here on the brickwork to test the quality Right, and this is my other native 4K at 30 frames a second shot, which will also be shot at 1080-60. But the 4K clips will be put on a separate clip, which I will link. And there's some good detail here too, on the rigging, on the boats, the windows, on the cottages, the colours. And now these clips are at 1080-60, gyro on, 16 by 9 with the lens hood on. Also recorded as a 4K 30 frames a second and on a separate clip. And there's some good detail here and in the distance you can see the harbour. And there's some good detail on the brickwork which I think shows the sharpness from right left hand edge of the frame to the right hand edge of the frame and I always see how well I can read the lettering on the shop signs and here's the same clip 
101060 the gyro is turned on the audio is from the camera of course and these clips are also on at 4k on a separate clip and there's some noisy motorbikes going across around the harbour Just remind me, what was your name again? Nick. Nick. Yeah. This is Nick and his Harry. most beautiful hornbill that you, you raised from a chick, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raised from a chick. Cheers, Nick. You're well. of 20 or 30 action cameras I've tested lately that's actually come with a purpose-built lens hood so let's see how well it performs shooting into the Sun and action cameras have wide-angle lenses so they do often catch a bit of lens flare right, another good test shot cottage is the other side of the harbour some of it's in sun, some of it's in shade, and it's into the sun. And I must say the screen is very good on this, I can actually see it well even in bright sunlight. And this is my mate Steve Fry, famous musician, cleaning the bottom of his boat, which is called Lazy Days. And it's not exactly lazy if on a Sunday you're working on your boat, is it Steve? Anyway, testing another camera here. You're going to be famous, you're going to be on YouTube. Unless you have any objections. No, absolutely not. Oh well. Absolutely. Right, I'll see you later Steve anyway.
Yeah, hands up, hands up. Hands up. Do you know what you're doing, Robin? No. I wouldn't be here if I did. Right, and just for a change, a different pub for the low light test. As you can see, dark as a dungeon in there. Yeah. 